Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The East Ends are evil. I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have, for 10 November, a Warframe creepypasta, Excalibur of the Void. So, um, yeah, y'all are, uh, y'all out there who have seen our tweets for, for Warframe creepypastas, you're slacking! <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> I've had to. I had to search. <laughs> I've, oh, had to search I've had to search far and wide across the internet. Uh, we're not even doing this. This creepypasta even isn't even on creepypasta.wiki or like a Warframe for. Oh, actually, I think it is on one of the Warframe forums. But it we we find a Warframe creepypasta Excalibur of the Void on DeviantArt, uh, as it is by Chenny or Word of Chen uh, on DeviantArt. So you can go check it out there. Uh, I just want to full disclosure. This was posted August 2014, so like we had kind of earlier last weekend, or like last week with the uh, session or with the uh, the story um, details pertaining to the world of Warframe are a little outdated. But I digress. I will move on to the rundown. Um. So while on a solo mission in the void at one of the ruined Orican towers to capture various targets, a lone Tenno comes across a strange figure crawling towards them as the lights begin to flicker. Uh, the, this apparition scares the Tenno into firing upon it, but it vanishes, allowing them to flee for the extraction point. However, they are stopped by a silent transmission of an Excalibur frame requesting help. Uh, Unable to leave one of his own behind, they follow the signal, cutting down some of the regular foes in the tower to clear the way. But the deeper they proceed, the narrower and darker the hallways become. Uh, the Tenno begins experiencing a sense of claustrophobia in the in these narrow <clears throat> in these narrow spaces, and then the apparition is in front of them as suddenly as a blink more horrid than any infested mutation they've seen, with the facial features all wrong and lopsided. The Tenno pulled out their weapon and emptied into this horror. Again, it simply vanished, now reacting, uh, not reacting whatsoever to damage that the Tenno inflicted on them. Uh, and the Tenno themselves found, them, found themselves in an empty space. Um, this open area similar to the to his clan's dojo uh there was a single tree in the center as a decoration um and they felt compelled to sit by it uh as they they did this they became stricken with paralysis unable to move and they heard someone on the other side of the tree the excalibur from the transmission who said apologies brother but someone needs to take my place. Uh, it was then that the creature that had stalked the um, uh, the Tenno up to this point reappears, revealing a jerking, slumped, and mangled human woman with eyes as black as coal and filed sharp teeth, also bearing some kind of black ooze about them. The woman went up to the paralyzed Tenno and began digging her filthy hands through the armor as easy as tissue paper, and into the Warframe's innards, inflicting immense and uncomfortable pain. While this is happening, and as the afflicted Tenno begins to black out from the pain, the Excalibur walks around the tree to face this Tenno in his Warframe uh, and says something to them. However, for, through the pain, the Tenno is unable to hear it. And then the Tenno wakes up um, sometime later, to see four new Tenno in their Warframes looking down at him. And the Tenno, who is sitting, hears himself say in, a, in his own voice that one of these Tenno will have to take his place. Finn. So yeah, that's the rundown for Excalibur of the Void. 
Now we shall move on to everyone tolerates the grammar inquisitions at this point. All right, so I've got these ones. I had been contacted with the names of a several targets, enemy officers of high priority to be captured alive. So on, this one's a pretty easy one. Just remove the A between of and several. So it says with the names of several targets. Uh, my next one here is I then cloaked myself in a shimmering veil of invisibility, making my through the towers hallways seeking my targets. I think you need the word way in there. So it says uh, making my way through the towers hallways seeking my targets. Yep. And my next one. <laughs> it was then that my feelings of dread return. This is my past tense, uh, pres present tense, future tense sort of like nitpick here, but this it needs to be. Tense issue. Yeah, my, this is my tense issue. Um, it needs to be returned. So it was then that my feelings of dread returned. So. Uh, my next one. A sharp tingle ran down the length of my spine as the lights in the tower flickered. You need a sharp tur a sharp tingle ran down the length of my spine. I didn't catch any of these yet. <laughs> I am the Typonese master. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, I'm the Typonese master because I'm Oh yeah, you type over it. Yeah, you type over yeah, you read over it, yeah. Uh, my next one here uh, is a little bit more um I'll get into it. Um, it's more than just a like a missing word. Um, it was strange that I had not encountered any of the corrupted up till now. But as I rounded the corner leading to extraction point, I ran into a corrupted patrol. So the first thing I want to say is like, so uh, it, it mentions the corrupted um, twice in this. Um, in the first time, it's not capitalized, but I think it should be. Because that is because they're like a faction. Exactly, yeah. Uh, the other thing I I did was I actually fic I kind of re re retooled the uh, the last part of this sentence. So, um, at the uh, point line, it's like, but as I rounded the corner, leading to the extract to the extraction point, because it was like two extraction point, just kind of seemed a little bit weird. Um, just two extraction would work. Yeah, it seemed I had jinxed myself with the with a patrol. So just like so, it's not repeating corrupted twice in the same sentence. Yeah. Um. And my next one here. Uh, it was as though the walls and ceiling was narrowing around me. Needs to be. It was as though the walls and ceiling were narrowing around me. Because there's plural. <laughs> uh yes. and. And my next one here. For what felt like an hour, we stared each other down. This strange monstrosity, far more frightening than even the worst of the infested, seemed almost curious about me. Um, so that's all one word. That's all one sentence. This is all one word. Jesus. <laughs> uh, that's all one sentence. And I feel like the comma between um, uh, we stared each other down and this monstrosity could just be a period to kind of separate it into two sentences. So just to kind of like break it up a little bit. So for what felt like an hour, we stared each other down, period. This strange monstrosity, far more frightening than even the worst of the infested, seemed almost curious about me, period. So. That sounds good. And, okay, cool. Um, wow, we're all in a plan in agreement so, so far. Weird. <laughs> in grammar, uh, it's usually it either works or doesn't work. Yeah. And my last grammar inquisition. I could hear someone taking a seat at the opposite end of the tree, and I could sense him smiling as he spoke to me. Apologies, brother, but someone needs to take my place. Okay, so I feel like this could be worded slightly different and with a bit more clarity. So I kind of re rewrote a little bit. I could hear someone standing or I could hear someone standing up on the opposite side of the tree and I could sense him smiling as he spoke to me. Da, 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 da. It keeps going. So just like for me, it, it is like, how do you hear someone taking a seat 
at the up. Also, why are they taking a seat? I thought they were also kneeled and in, in, in like the like sit down next to the tree and hence and like per- paralyzed. Hence, why you needed to sit down and be paralyzed to kind of like take their place, right? So I kind of like fixed it or like made it a little bit more clear that like as our Tenno here, like our and our protagonist is sitting down and becoming paralyzed. The one on the other side of the tree is now standing up, able to move again. Um, also, um, the opposite end of the tree seems like kind of weird to me because, like, when I think of the opposite end of something, it's usually like the opposite end of a room, not on the other side of a tree. So I just did yeah, the, the opposite, opposite end of the tree would be the top of the tree, e- exactly. But the opposite side of the tree is is fine. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my thing with him like sitting down and everything is like uh narrator Tenno sat down and then um the the one that's like tied to the void here had to come down and sit down at the tree with him and then when they're both sitting there he that's when... recites apologies brother but someone needs to take my place and then he can get up and do the other shit to actually swap places with him like because he sat down at the tree with him and said that that is yeah. when the curse transferred over maybe also i think it would be really creepy if like the, the 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 Excalibur is hanging from the tree, like from a tree limb, and yeah. then as they as this as Arteno sits down and gets paralyzed, they hear the uh, that Excalibur fall to the ground and then sit down and recite the uh, the ritual. Like it's it was like they were again to add extra like creepiness to the to the scene. I think like, that adds extra hilarity because I'm just envisioning. A guy falling and spinning face yeah, the down falling on the ground. Uh, okay, well, I wasn't thinking like that, but okay. <laughs> like, what you do is um, he gets like compelled to sit down. He sits there, and then instead of the other guy saying it, Nair says it, basically saying that like um, I'm here to t- like reword it, obviously saying yeah, but say something like I'm here to take your place or something, and then you hear the bar the bark of the tree kind of like bending as like the limb lowers the one guy down and drops him off to like oh grab the new guy and pick him yeah. up. Yeah. It's like some kind of like creepy. Yeah. Like some creepy void tree that like, like it's like the hangman's tree. Yeah. Like the I, trees I, I, in Warframe are weird. They're like the glowing white bark, like no yeah. leaves. That, that weird. could be really, yeah. Is that, and that's in like one of the, in the towers, right? Like that's in the Arkan towers. Yeah. There's those trees everywhere, basically. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that would be interesting if, like, they actually played on that as well. Like, had again, like, had the whole like creepy hanging imagery, or and have it almost be like, like, not maybe like be a part of this whole situation where it's like some kind of like, uh, like a whomping willow or like a carnivorous tree sort of thing where like it like strangles the person with their with the with its limbs. Because the trees are also like kind of like power cords in a way. Mm hmm. Is like with the uh, the uh, second dream spoiler tag, uh, like uh, hair in the back. There's if you look down in the the back of the area, there's like tree limbs coming up, plugging into the back of it. Oh, you're right. Shit. Yeah. So it's almost like, and that is supposed to be like tied to the void, or like that's like because the ten OR connect to the void. Yeah. Right. So, um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> spoilers for the for the second dream <laughs> a little bit. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, I digress. That's that's kind of what I had an idea for for like fixing uh, the grammar issues. So uh, that is the end of my grammar acquisition. So Mikey, the E stands for evil. Well, you did a good job. Sweet. So. Yes. <laughs> I have an it story. Okay. Stories. And now, an it, okay, insert it story here. Wait, no, yeah, I do. Oh, shit. And now, an it story with Mikey. The E stands for evil. Take it away. It was an easy mission, one that I'd completed about a hundred times before. It was quiet in the town when I landed. Ugh, in the tower when I landed. It was an expression that I savored, burying my previous feelings of trepidation beneath a layer of sadistic joy. It took me only a few seconds to leap up onto a nearby wall 
and dash across its surface, lunging high above the network of lasers to drive my toxic blade into his shoulder. It was then that my feelings of dread return. It moved slowly, as though its shoulders were weighted, worshipping the floor as it made its way towards me. It was not far to the exit, and my recent experiences taught me that I was dealing with a force I didn't understand. It was strange that I had not encountered any of the corrupted up until now. But as I rounded the corner leading to extraction point, I ran into a corrupted patrol. It was cold here, and the chill penetrated me so deeply that I could feel it through the very surface of my frame. Yet my shield registered no damage, and my sensors indicated that everything was normal. It was in that moment that I came face to face with a terrible horror. Its face, if indeed it could be called that, was little more than a featureless surface with a misplaced nose and several gaping mouths. It had a lopsided pair of eyes with multiple pupils that dilated as it stared at me. It didn't shriek in pain, nor did it show any sign of damage. It simply vanished from my sight, leaving me in a room that resembled my clan's dojo. It was an open space, as far as I can recall yet it seemed dead beyond belief. It was a human woman, yet she seemed damaged somehow. It took her a good few minutes to stand in front of me, and when she raised her head, the human part of me screamed in terror. It was the Excalibur that I had seen before. It revealed a decrepit humanoid with gray skin and tattoos carved into its flesh. Finn. Man, it that was kind of a coherent story in itself because it just seemed like this Tenno had just come. I uh, was doing a uh, uh, like an, an extra uh, ex, uh, what is an elimination mission or extermination mission, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like the thing they're ch- they're hunting down and like trying to kill is this like Pennywise esque shape shifting mass like of terror, <laughs> like it's cha- changing into different ver- into different things as like they're sinking their blade into its shoulder. <laughs> it's this weird thing on the ground, and then like when it stands up, it's Excalibur all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was surprisingly. <laughs> I mean, it, though, yeah, that says something about the story <laughs> using a lot of its. <laughs> mm. It's really easy to oh, hell. I just said that in a fucking sentence because <laughs> I started the sentence with an with an it. Well, yeah, because we use it all the time, so it's like a pitfall. Yeah. So in writing, though, it's not necessarily good to start a whole bunch of sentences with it. Yeah, which is the reason that Mikey does his its stories and such to highlight all the sentences that could start with better words. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, Mikey, do you have anything else aside from your it story? Nope, that's it. Okay. Gamer. Okay. The first one is, uh, we were warriors. The orc and elite believed uh, to believe otherwise seems uh, silly to me, or at least that's what I used to think. So um, this being told first person, so wouldn't it be we are warriors? Because it's like, it's not like they're not warriors anymore. Oh, we did it say we were warriors? Yeah, were. I, I wonder if it's like we were. Like, yeah, I think it's like. I guess what you're saying. They still are. It's yeah. just they're not members of the Orkin anymore. Yeah, that, I think that's where like the hiccup is there. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah it should be we are. And uh, this section, I feel like the paragraph break here isn't really necessary. Uh, last sentence of a paragraph is, the mission was different. Uh, something about the void itself was entirely different. But who was I to question the will of the Lotus? 
then it goes down to the next paragraph. My mission was to, or sorry, my mission was the priority here and I had no time to waste on wanton thoughts. I took a deep breath to calm myself as my ship hovered over the portal into the void. And as I dropped into the tower, I steeled myself, holding my Litron Prime to my chest. That second part was two sentences, by the way. Um, yeah. So I feel like, and that was the entirety of that second paragraph. And then it goes to another one. I feel like you could take the last sentence of the previous one and just click it down into that to make mm -hmm. that short paragraph a little bit bigger because they're talking about the same thing. They're talking about the specifics of the mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yep. And I need to... I didn't highlight the problem here. Oh, yeah, I did. It's just very hard to see. All right. Thinking back now, I probably should have brought a team. After all, I... Sorry, I have to say it's a different, a specific way. After all, I had heard the Tenno uh, that worked in Jesus. After all, I had heard the Tenno that worked in groups of four. Jesus, that's really weird to say. Specifically, because there's a missing comma. I oh, think. okay. Because it would be after all, I had heard that Tenno worked in groups of four. Instead of after all, I had heard of Tenno that worked in groups of four. Oh yeah, I, I see the inflection. It's like after all, I heard. Yeah, yeah. After all, I had heard of Tenno working. Yeah, it's because it's yeah. after all, I had heard. Yeah, yeah. The inflection mm -hmm. is 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 important there. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, my last one is I holstered my rifle and drew my dual liquor blades, admiring the violent look of the weapon as I held it in my hand. So there's two of them. So wouldn't it be plural? And he'd be like, I holstered my rifle and drew my dual liquor blades, admiring the violent look of the weapons as I held them in my hands. Yeah. Um, is that a du no, Dave is, or gamer? Is that a a, a dual we a dual wielding weapon? On each hand. Okay. So he They're basically he, infested so, sickles. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So he picked he he pulled out his rifle and then put it back in and changed it and got his his, his swords. <laughs> What? Or was he using? Was he holding the rifle beforehand? I'm assuming he was. Okay, so maybe uh, he should like it should say that he like he holstered his rifle and then pulled out his Icar blades because it, to me it sounded like he he pulled out his rifle as well as two swords because he has a third arm apparently. I holstered my rifle, which is putting it away. Oh, did he? Okay, I thought he's okay. I'm I'm dumb. I I thought I, 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 I mis holstered. Yeah, I I misread that as drawing his rifle. He's <laughs> heard. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you misread it as well? I also misread it, yeah. Oh, I see. He put the rifle away and pulled the blades out and admired only one even though he had two. That's my yeah. point. Gotcha. That's the end of my grammar. Okay. Then we shall move on to actual thoughts. Um, right. And I'm just going to start with this little paragraph here. It, there's there's other paragraphs in the story that, have, that are an example, but I'm going to use this one. Um... Yet this time, as I flew toward the void aboard my Lisette, I felt my hairless skin prickle with goosebumps, a sensation I had not felt for an eternity. My scarred throat began to burn, and a feeling that reminded me of fear had settled into the depths of my chest. This mission was different. Something about the void itself was entirely different. But who was I to question the will of the Lotus? So... I love how last week we were talking about we were saying that Warframe creepypastas really sh would like be creepier and even more effective if they were done in fiction. Yes. And then I go ahead and like read this story for the first time, and it's an in fiction Warframe game or Warframe creepypasta. Like it's set. It, it's not a player playing Warframe. It is a Tenno in the world of Warframe. The wow. the, the the information is a little out of date. Uh, based on like again the game because it came out in 2014 and like that was before the second dream I assume correct? Second dream was 2015 I believe. Okay so yeah like a year off but like like still like we didn't no one like back in 2014 no this one knew what that. everyone assumed. Exa yeah exactly this is exactly what everyone assumed yeah based on what we know now again if you haven't played Warframe go check it out it's really cool I say that as somebody who didn't like it initially and got really into it <laughs> mm. One thing I, I want to bring up, though, is I wish the story referenced the factions of this, uh, like of his targets. Um, it's not brought up, so I couldn't figure out if it was the Grenier or the Corpus being targeted. Um, given like given some later comments, the targets were wetting themselves in fear. 
I figured it would it might have been the corpus since they're kind of like the regular the, the more regular human like science types like science type uh, scientist types and though I guess it could be the grenier and that would just be a little bit funnier is them like pissing themselves but <laughs> well they okay with warframe knowledge under your belt he's yes. in the void doing a mission which means he's yeah. probably fighting the corrupted which are a mixture of all the different uh factions that are all being like mind controlled by the tower but is he fighting corrupted at the moment because um he's doing a mission in the void because corrupted wouldn't wouldn't wet themselves <laughs> you would think because corrupted are like mindless like thralls to the the orican or whatever the uh whatever the orican void thing is right basically like the tower itself has some um orican space magic science in it that um like any invaders they get uh mind controlled and just become uh guards of the tower okay but i don't know the extent of that mind yeah, control I... if it's like they act normal it's just their allegiance has changed i've honestly never literally yeah. zombies yeah see i've i've never assumed they were like they had free will i always assumed that they were just like they were in like basically like either mesmerized or like just like their brains had just been like taken over by the tower so now they were just like drones yeah which is probably the case yeah but i do know that like even in the void like there are corpus and grenier like factions yes. like groups in there so yeah but yeah that's the, that's no, the one thing so I, short, yeah i agree with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it should be explained a little bit more because you kind of have to just make your own assumptions. Yeah. And we all know it's the age old, it's the age old uh, statement. We all know. Yeah. That assuming means. When you, yeah. <laughs> when you make assumptions, you piss off gamer. Yes, clearly. That's the old adage, right? <laughs> yep. That's, that's definitely the old uh, proverb. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. Uh, on to my next one though. Uh, I drew my Latron prime from its holster and waited, thinking that I was about to face the stalker. It was a pathetic member of, a, of the Low Guardians, still believing himself capable of passing judgment upon the Tenno. Okay, so I kind of feel like this Tenno, like the one that's talking, uh, that's like narrating this, might be a tad edgelord himself. <laughs> Un not Perhaps. unlike the stalker, and also a certain stalker fanboy that me and Gamer know. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Like the the way he's like the way that's being written, it's just like it's like that pathetic member of the Low Guardians, still believing he can pass judgment on us Tenno. <laughs> like, okay there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we also don't know the uh the time frame of when this is taking place, because actually I don't remember. It comes out in twenty said... uh, this was oh, it was posted in twenty fourteen, but <laughs> I mean in lore. Uh, yeah, I know in lore, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean um in I mean... to like if yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say, yeah, in lore, like I mean, do we have a timeline <laughs> in, in Warframe? Yeah, like is this um back in the uh like during the Orkin era or in modern? Because if it's I back during it was... the Orkin era, then they may be as snooty as the Orkin because they're working okay, for I... the Orkin. Okay, maybe. Yeah, because I just assumed well he he's working for the Lotus. Like like the uh, right. so like yeah I think this is still this is like set basically pre second dream. Um, it would be my guess. <laughs> yeah, because maybe he'd show the, the, maybe he'd show the stalker a little bit more respect after. <laughs> uh, spoilies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but you're probably right. Basically, I was expecting you to ask what he was talking about about the low guardians. You know what? Yeah, what what is that about? I I just like I've sometimes I just like take things for granted in lore. So like I like that's like how I I just like you know what? Sure, low guardians. That's something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's yeah. not too much to go on that I could have found. I mean, I didn't search high and low for it. But in the stalkers, um, uh, like what's the word? It's flavor text. It yeah. says. Basically, what happens is, um, I'll just read it real quick. The Tenno mm -hmm. appeared uh, at the terminus, gleaming and victorious. Our cold and gold emperors, breathless, bathed you in savior silk. Then came the sound across all our worlds. 
at it uh, all at once the ceremonial Naga drums, a royal salute to the honored Tenno, ten solemn beats to declare the suffering was over. I watched from a distance with the rest of the low guardians. With each beat, terror began to crush my throat. The Tenno were not stoic and silent. They were waiting. They were poised. I tried to call out, but only a strangled whisper escaped. So basically, A, that's why the stalker speaks in um, like a whisper. Because they, uh, there's some weird shit that happened with the drums that like actually literally silenced these low guardian guys. And I believe the low guardians were... Um, it's kind of like uh, they took her jab situation where they were the... Uh, Oh, you know what? They're the um, they're the elites from Halo. That uh, uh, before yes. the uh, the brutes showed up, they were the honored guard of the Orokin, and then these new guys came on in that were way better and basically took over. Gotcha. So like basically like okay, so that and actually that kind of like so that, that's cool that this story actually like incorporates like that kind of like that level of lore into this like just as like a passing like mention. Because yeah, that's not said anywhere in game. I think that's only <laughs> mentioned in the Stalker's Codex, yeah. as far as I know. Nice. So it's so a this person, cut. Yeah, this person did their research in game for the, for yeah. the time. Um, and actually, that kind of goes into my next quote and comment here. Um, so the quote is, uh, I began to gasp a little, as if struggling for air. The sensation was so similar to those painful moments when we were deprived of life support, and I was almost ready to turn back. So... I think this is referencing those life support missions that you'd have to do, where you'd have to like, um, at least as far as I know, like that's like I think what's referencing, which is a game mode where you have to fight waves of enemies while you're re- also recharging the life support systems of uh, like of a nearby like area. Um, it's not waves and- of enemies; you are surviving an endless onslaught of enemies as uh, whatever faction you're fighting has like pulled life support to the area. Is that not by definition waves of enemies? <laughs> it's yeah, like but it's not, awesome. I, I know. Yes, I, I get, but I get, it's yeah. not. They don't come at you in actual structured waves like in the defense missions where it's like wave one, fight all these okay, guys, yeah. and then okay. wave two starts. Okay. Um, yeah, regardless though, like I do like how this story like adds in little bits of, even though it's like an earlier version of the game that this person's like writing from and basing off of. Um, they're still building up this, like they're they're adding in little bits of pieces uh, of passing lore, and even like in game, like adding like some in game, um, like depth to the lore, like to some stuff. Like again, like these life support missions, he's just he's mentioning, he's referencing. At least yeah. that's what it seems like. Yep, for sure. Now that said, um, Front row. slight spoilers. Um, we're talking the, second well, dream spoilers? Possibly. Um, <laughs> I feel like you should put a second dream spoiler warning at the start of everything in 10 November. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I did actually do for like the first, like for, for the Navarus episode, I literally did have like, uh, I went in and like figured out where, no, I think it was like actually the last episode we did, where we, uh, it's like, um, uh, go to one hour, 40 minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, no, I'm not going to do that for this. Like, just be war. I'll, I'll try and be, I'll try and not, I'll try and not be a spoiler. But like mm. this is an earlier version of the game, yes. Um, and where we didn't know the full extent of the Warframe Tenno relationship. Yes. Um, I. But regardless of that, because like again, like he's like talking like struggling like to breathe and stuff like that. Um, and like it being painful to him and stuff like that. Uh, despite that, though, I do like the in-game content being treated in fiction, like as a narrative. Like again, like yeah. I said earlier, we're like. Again, this this life support mission that you get in game, like there's ludo narrative dissonance here that is like sh- really small because they're actually incorporating a game mechanic like from like the actual like gaming part of it into the lore. <laughs> what is the opposite of ludo narrative dissonance? Stop. Hang on. <laughs> opposite of <laughs> because, ludo- specifically because I, I watch Game Grumps on the on the rag and um. Aaron from Game Grumps has mentioned ludo narrative dissonance <laughs> multiple times. Yes, yeah, yeah. When saying, when talking about things, and he also has come up with the question of like, what's the opposite of ludo narrative dissonance? And I, I keep forgetting I to look it up. I have the answer. Uh, it's okay. called ludo narrative consistency. Um, ah. the, the opposite of ludo narrative dissonance is ludo narrative consistency. And games like Dead Space have been celebrated for carrying the vibe of the storyline in the you know into the way the game is played. 
uh, one feels more immersed in such games, uh, it's been argued, because there aren't any seams between one aesthetic experience and, you know, the mechanics of the game. Yeah. Uh, and that was, um, uh, th- like, on, the first thing that pops up on Google, and it's by, uh, it's on a website, brainlenses.substack.com, uh, by uh, Colin Wright. So I'll leave a, I'll, I'll make sure to put that in the descriptor, uh, like as like a link for this episode. Yep. Um, because yeah, that's, that's what it is. Basically, it's like, it's the fusion of mechanics and story together. <laughs> story, mechanics, together. together. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a meme that we, uh, an in, like our in podcast meme that we haven't used for a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah, I like that blending like how they they're it's it's being referenced in the story that's basically what i'm trying to get at (laughs) um and then my next thing which is literally going to start with the next thing (laughs) right Uh, the next thing i remember was waking up in a tower with a squad of four looking surprised to find to have found me they were glad to see me unharmed but they were surprised to hear me speak apologies my brothers and sisters but someone will need to take my place so this is like at the very end um, where our narrator, like our, our Tenno here, um, gets stu- uh, is now taking the place of the other uh, Warframe that was on the other side of the tree in the dojo-like space. Yes. And I like this ending because it fakes you out as it being a dream. <laughs> and then it's just like, nope, it's just somebody else needs to take his place. <laughs> like he's, he's, yep. the, he's the next person. It's his turn on the, uh, in this cycle of like weird horror. <laughs> he's done his horror shift. Yeah. It's sort of like, um, yeah, like it, it's a fake out dream sequence thing. Cause like he wakes up is like, but then he wakes up and he's still in the, in the horror. Like he's still in the nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So I, I actually really liked the ending for that reason. Hmm. Um, but uh, that's that's my actual thoughts. So, so Mikey, I hand you the spotlight. <laughs> All right. So, my first actual thought here, I have a quote. Um, for what felt like an hour, we stared each other down. This strange monstrosity, far more frightening than even the worst of the infested, seemed also curious about. Me. So the whole time thing here is what I, I didn't care. A little, about. a little too specific. Yeah, a little, a little too, too long. long to be staring unblinkingly. Well, I mean, it, it, what seemed like an hour? Like it's just like it. It didn't. It wasn't actually an hour, but it seemed like forever. Yeah, but it just. Is it because it's such a specific long amount of time? If it said what seemed like forever. Yeah, or it yeah. seemed okay like an that. eternity. <laughs> yeah, that would have been better. Yeah, something a little bit yeah. more outlandish because you know it's like a vague. It's 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 outlandish and vague enough that it's like it it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like what seemed like two hours, forty three minutes, and twenty three seconds. <laughs> God damn it! I was literally about to like. I was like literally thinking that exact time. <laughs> Get what? out of my head! That exact number? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was literally thinking two hours, forty minutes. You know, you you started. <laughs> wow. That is creepy. That's weird. We hang out too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving you, gamer. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. I can't. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So that was just a little bit of an issue for me. But uh, okay. moving on to my next actual thought. Uh, so I. I also liked the ending of the whole the cycle continues. Yeah. Um but it does leave a question of what happens when there's a group of four. Because when he did it it was just solo. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the sequel. Are they do they just like all black out and suddenly they one of them is missing <laughs> except <laughs> and this guy's just taking their place like they're back on the Lisette. Going or they're back on their orbiter. <laughs> it's like, wait, where's 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 Rhino? <laughs> or they're all taken. Oh, <laughs> just like a four 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 of those like horribly 
uh, mutilated and disfigured like women just show up and just like paralyze them and then like rip into their guts, or even just the one doing it to all of them. Oh yeah, and they, it's which in a, makes in it a seem line. way more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in a row, so like they're yeah one after the other, like even more like so like it's even more tormenting. Yeah, just been the last ten in a row. It's like okay, you're next. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, like it turns into a horror flick, a slasher yeah. flick. Yeah, like she gets one, and it takes a while, but they can't really do anything about it, and they try running yeah. away, but they can't leave the tower. Well, no, 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 they're, they're, no. Like I, I'm thinking, like suddenly, like they all like walk over, like of their own, of not of their own volition, they all just walk over to the place where the um, where the the uh, the other where the uh, oh, I see the one Tenno is. He gets up. They all like just like kind of again against their will sit down in a meditative stance, and then mm. that's when the creature comes over, and they they can't move while they're in the stance. And she's just like, all they can do is see their friends one by one get like attacked by this by this creature. Yep. While the the creature can only, or if the creature can only puppet one at a time, then it basically turns into dead by daylight. Oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) Where they have to figure out how to survive and get out. Yeah, and and like they they're trying to like run away, like like running through the the tower, trying to find the exit. Like their their maps are scrambling, so they can't find the uh, the extraction point. Yep. And they have to fix generators. Yep. <laughs> the is that, th- is that thing in Dead by Daylight? That's that's the only thing that they do in Dead by Daylight. The survivors oh, have to fix like there's five or six uh, generators around the map. They have to fix like two, I think. Um, and then when they fix those two, the the two uh, exit gates open, and then they can yep. use either of those gates to get out. Gotcha. Why don't they just climb the gates? <laughs> Because it's you're in like a wall because the, cause the kind video of thing. game. <laughs> it's really tall. Because <laughs> of Ludo narrative dissonance. <laughs> yes, yes, that's why. Exactly that's exactly why. it. it. Actually, is invisible walls. <laughs> well, no, they're not invisible. They're very visible. No. It's just they're very okay. tall. Yeah, fair enough. All right. So, but yeah, I, I think that's a good point there, Mikey. <laughs> yeah. And then there's my next actual thought is based on the blurb that is sort of after the story um, from the author. Yeah. And to me, it it sort of ruins the ending a bit um, because of this quote. Uh, it is based on a glitch that happens when you play capture missions in the Orican Void, usually solo. One of the Warframes, Excalibur, will send you a message. The message is completely silent, and he sort of just stares at you for a bit before disappearing. So the whole usually solo, to me, means like, well, why is there a group of four at the end if... They, if you're usually solo when you get this message from Excalibur. So this is a very good example of a story that is based off of a glitch in a game. And what we were talking about last week, I believe, where the character takes the, the weird like thing that they saw in a game and expands upon it more in a horror story. So yeah, like, like, Just because the glitch only happens to solo players doesn't mean that they can't take that idea and make it happen to everybody. Exactly. Like, yeah, th- that's, that's really what, like, I, that's to me, like, I, I, I think I like, uh, it, it doesn't ruin it. Like the explanation that we get at the end there about like where this inspiration is. It, it honestly like just helps me understand where the inspiration for the story came from and like heightens it a little bit more. Um, also, it's that's right cool. after the ending. So it's not like it's spoiled anything. You already read the yeah. ending. Yeah. yeah. It, and, it, and it's, it's not actually part of the story that that's actually the, uh, that's actually the description box. Like um, in, on DeviantArt, because this is on DeviantArt, um, they they have a um, like that you when you post a story or or any piece of art, you can then go in and write a blurb at like underneath, like in a in a little like descriptor box beneath the the piece of art or the story, or the the writing pro that you've added to your. Oh, and that's DeviantArt. what that is. Yeah, that's what that is. Although, yeah, their their account is like uh, they're using a slightly different, I think, uh, interface. So it it sort of blends in. Unfortunately, with the writing, uh, it's a different. Not font, careful. Though. It is a little bit. It's a different font. It's a slightly smaller font, but it is a little confused. I can understand a little bit of confusion there. Um, 
but yeah, no, that's that's just basically like a like sort of like an art description, like a like an art blurb, like with like an artist's thoughts, like sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so all the words above would just be where the picture would be if it was an an image. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, uh, I feel like it would have been cooler if the group of four was just one, because the glitch only happens or usually only happens when there's only one of them. I hear you, but we were literally just complaining about this last week mm -hmm. about like staying too true to the, the real life in like, like inspiration for a story. <laughs> like I think yeah, it, like yeah, as yeah. a creepy faucet, you have the ability to expand it and do what you will with it. Yeah. And like, elaborate it's inspired more. by a glitch that happens in solo, mm -hmm. but, but what happens and, and, can be used elsewhere. Granted, the story doesn't go on to like see what yeah. happens to those four. So yeah. we could, I could use a sequel, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know what happened to those four. <laughs> okay, yeah, but also that's also I could also make the argument that that's part of horror is like not getting the answers and just kind of leaving it for the audience to wander or to wonder what the hell is going to happen next. Like it's sort of like that's yeah, campfire story one hundred and one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Like I don't, I'm not disagreeing with you, Mikey. Like it is a valid point. <laughs> like because I would like also like to know what happens. To, like know more about what happens to these four Warframes that have to deal now have to deal with this. But it's not done. It, it's not done poorly the way it is. <laughs> mm. It's just like an idea. An ex honestly, like what you're proposing is just a suggestion on how to on how you would write this part of the story. <laughs> I'll say this to keep it. Let's say this glitch was in the game right now. Like yeah. we were reading this as the glitch was uh, prevalent or whatever, and it only happened in for solo people. Mm -hmm. Then in that situation, if you were wanting to keep people in meat space uh, immersed in the story, then yes, you would keep it only solo players because after you read the story, then you go in and do a solo mission. You see that happen. And you're like, oh, and then you're like, oh no, <laughs> yeah, ah, <laughs> oh, shit, not it, man. You'd be really creative, like, because if this was like, I, I can't. I know we made the argument. It's like, I the reason why I like this story is because it's in lore and in fiction. But it'd be funny, like, if you, this happens in game, and you lose your character, you lose that character, like, you you just lose that Warframe, like, it it boots you back Brutal. to your back to your uh, your your orbiter. And you have a new, you have one of your other Warframes like activated, but you and you you've lost your the, the Warframe that you were using in that yeah. tower. Like that would be so, that would be the the in real life gamer horror. It really is. <laughs> like holy I'm not shit! Gonna form another one. I'm gonna get a new potato. <laughs> exactly. New forma. Uh... Yeah, exactly. No, that that's exactly it. It's just like <laughs> fa. It's it's like <laughs> horror, but like too real. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's so much that goes into like like grind, I, and then I had to get like my friend gamer here and like uh, take my account and grind some some levels up for my Warframes. <laughs> yeah, level back up. I'm yeah. too casual <laughs> for Warframe. Get to your fashion frame all over again. Uh, <laughs> just a whole thing. Yeah, it's just a whole whole deal. Like so. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm glad that it's 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 in in lore horror fiction, <laughs> not an in game, not a not a player horror game. Yes. Or Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's in my actual thoughts. Okay. And gamer. I go. Uh, where am I? I'll get my first one. Uh, so this is just in regards. To, wait, is this how it started? No. Yes, in regards to how it started, saying there were many legends surrounding the mysterious space known as the Orphan Void. My fellow Tenno told me whispers from behind the walls, images and apparitions that called out to them, a strange tune that played in hallways after all the lights were destroyed. So I read that. I'm like, oh, shit. So we're actually getting an in-world story. Yeah. And possibly a man in the wall story? Call Almost. I mean, I mean, it's, it is vo it is it is it isn't the man in the wall, but it is. In the void, which the man in the wall is tied to, correct? Yes, he is a <laughs> creature of the void. So there's However, nothing this saying is published, yeah. this is published in 2014. And the man in yes. the wall was made an appearance 2016, which it wasn't is even it explained until 2017. Which is really interesting because of the mention of like whispers from behind the walls. Yeah, like those like, words specifically. Yeah, it's like almost foretelling 
Uh, or like, yeah, it's almost like prophesizing the man in the wall. <laughs> yes. That's kind of creepy in itself. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah. I read that. I'm like, wait, when the hell was this released? Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. My God. Then uh, next one, I felt my hairless skin prickle with goosebumps. A uh, sensation I had not felt for an eternity. My scarred throat began to burn. And a feeling that reminded me of fear had settled in in the depths of my chest. So this is 2014. Mm-hmm. This was before yeah. Second Dream and all that, yep. which was a year later. But it's interesting, uh, the theorizing of why they don't talk, and assuming that they're just hairless humans underneath the armor. Yeah, because like he's saying, like my scarred throat began to burn. Like there's a specific in lore reason why the Warframes don't talk. That is neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it also kind of ties into like again, like what you were saying earlier, or like earlier, but the the low guard. And how they were silenced by the note by the by the disruption of the um, the Naga beats. the Naga drums yeah. yeah the Naga drums so it's like wh- is this like something is this like is, uh, maybe maybe they took that blurb from like the lore of like the card of the stalker and like mm-hmm. figured that maybe all the Tenno had something similar to that happen yeah it's also kind of like another uh, aspect of ludo narrative harmony. What was it? A Lunarito consistency. Consistency, yeah, because like they don't talk in the game, and here's the reason why. Yeah, yeah, basically like applying lore to explain something in game. Mm. And again, this is this is basically fan fiction 101. <laughs> like yes. explaining things that aren't in the game, <laughs> or explaining th- explaining explaining things that you you know, you observe in a game for your story that's set in a world based off a game. The next one, I cloaked myself in a shimmering veil of invisibility, uh, making my making my through the towers hallways. Uh, yeah, I got that. Um, making my that, way through. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I got that on in my grammar inquisition. <laughs> gotcha. Either way, yeah. he's talking about that. So at that point, I'm assuming he's Loki or Loki Prime, mainly because you there's know, only that's... like two frames that go invisible, and one of them sucks at doing it. At least you back know, in the day. Absolutely... Yeah, you, we don't know which frame this one is, except for like from the context details of like of his powers, I guess, <laughs> of the power yeah. set he uses. He has to be a Loki or a Loki Prime, especially since Loki Prime was brand new at the time of this. Mm, so yeah, he's probably all primed out. Gotcha. And for those uninitiated, Loki is basically the sneaky um, and trickster sort of guy, which is mm-hmm. fitting because his name is Loki. Hmm. Uh, next one is an expression that I savored, uh, bearing my previous feelings of trepidation beneath a layer of sadistic joy. So I didn't hear the word trepidation before, so I learned a word. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, or rather, I've heard it, but I'd never really bothered learning what it meant. Yeah. It's basically just a feeling of fear or agitation that something's going to happen. Yep. Also, just the wording of that sentence is really nice. Yeah, it's, it's kind of poetic in a way. It is. I just saw a ragged figure, slouched or perhaps crouching close to the ground. It moved slowly, as though its shoulders were weighted, worshipping the floor as it made its way towards me. I really like the use of worshipping the floor to describe <laughs> how it moved. Yeah, just like, just like, kind of, it's in like this, like, um, bowing, like, bowed low position while it's crawling along the floor, like, basically just like smearing its face along the, along the floor. Yeah, I truly like that descriptor. Like, yeah. no joking about it. Like, that's <laughs> really cool. Yeah, it kind of gives me the um, not qu- not Valdo, speci- like kind of Valdo in terms of his movements, but also just like again, like um, some of the the creepier. Does uh, like the Ring Girl do that? I think Ring Girl has done that. Or am I I'm trying, I'm trying to... with the backwards one. You might be thinking the extras. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like what I've, I've seen. I've seen that kind of movement before. I think what I'm thinking of is like one of the zomb- the undead units in war in in the Warcraft world, where like it's like they're really close to the ground. They're like basically just like slinking, like they're human forms, but they're like they're belly they're basically belly dragging themselves um, with their arms and legs, like kind of hunt, like raised up above their above their bodies, like slinking on the ground, like it. That's the the only thing I can really kind of think of, like in terms of imagery for for what is happening here. <laughs> yeah, 
immediately went to Hasako from Killer Instinct. Mm, yeah. She has that like really creepy low crawl, which she like teleports and shit like that. I'll have to take a look at that. Um, Hasako? Yeah. I'm trying to find an image of it. Her actually doing the crawl. Oh, here you go. Wait. Yeah, actually, I'll link this. Yeah, yeah, very much like a like a Japanese horror sort of style. 100% agree with that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my last one is just in regards to the ending. Mm-hmm. So I get that he became trapped in the void and everything and had to wait to be found so the Shadow Woman could like take its new next victim. But what does that mean now for him? Is he also a quote-unquote decrepit humanoid with gray skin and tattoos carved into its flesh? Like the, the previous Excalibur that he found? Or did he... Like, did has he been when he freed? was taken? Did the yeah. previous Excalibur return to normal life, or is this creature basically making a Tenno army of zombies? That would be so fucking cool. Yeah. I, w- I want. I, I, I like that more than like than it's like. Fine. He gets like, to go it's home. like yeah, he just like yeah, like reverts like get like heals up his armor back, and then like yeah, he's fine. He just has these scars now underneath his uh, underneath his his in, underneath his suit. Um, Pretty cool. You know, that's though, not so. how frames work anymore. <laughs> um, yes, no. Yeah, I yeah, know it's Umbra. yeah, Umbra. Spoilers. <laughs> we can say we can say code words that mean nothing to the uninitiated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's how we get past the spoiler wall. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I I really do like the idea of like this tower just like just consuming fr- uh, Tenno, like yes. and amassing an army like a ghost army or like a, a like a like a, an undead army of Tenno. Mm. It would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, this the whole story is told as if Nair is telling someone a story, but at the end, and like the setup to the end made me wonder how it's actually being told. Like, is Nair because if like is if Nair's like, like you're a zombie if, underneath his armor, yeah. how's it being told? You know, like you're wondering if this is sort of the situation where like the story is being told to us, and then like from a, from a from a first person narrator narrator, and then it's revealed at the end that the narrator's been dead the whole time, like. Or yes. been a ghost telling, like, it's literally a ghost story, like a story being told to us by a ghost. Which, again, not, not something like, uh, it's not something you see a lot of. Um, and it, it can go either way, it can either be really good or really bad, depending on, like, your perspective on, like, that kind of storytelling. Yeah. But I just find there's no reason in here why the story's being told, aside from just the story needs to be told for the readers to have it. Yeah, but which, I thought of a way that it could be in lore, like keep everything 100 percent in lore being told, is um basically have it revealed at the end that Nair is telling his rescuers the story of what happened, alluding to the shadow woman coming to claim them after he's done the story. Oh, I see what you mean. Like so, like as yeah, so like now that I've told you my story, my brothers and sisters, I'm sorry, as one of you has to take my place. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think that'd be sick. Yeah, that would be that would be a nice improve. I think that would be a good improvement. It's just like because then it's like, and then that's where it, like it fades to black as like the te- they're all like looking at you like, wait, what? And then like behind them, like in in the movie, I'm seeing of this like the scene of, of the course. movie. I'm seeing like the woman just suddenly like like they're all like looking at each other, and then like behind them, you just see like a, a uh, the the woman creature like just rise up be- in, behind them, <laughs> and then it fades mm-hmm. to black. It'd yeah. be neat. Mm-hmm. It would also be. we didn't really talk about. The uh, like shadow woman creature herself. No, we didn't. Would you, uh, how'd you see her as? Um, I honestly saw her kind of as like, um, a like I guess like a Japanese horror monster mixed in with um like horror like like again like Sadako or um one of the the Grudge monsters, um or like a woman infested basically or like horribly or just or, or also actually no i know exactly how i envisioned her um so it's just she describes her as being like kind of mutilated and also having this black ooze all about her and there is a game eyes. and having really? multiple eyes there is a game called moons of madness uh for uh, yeah. which has um a wi- uh, a witch character that like uh that pops up in a like a nightmare in the first like five minutes of the game you're, you're in a nightmare um mm-hmm. And and the witch character who shows up in that, um, 
kind of reminded me of this because she's all coated in this like black ooze that's kind of like flowing from her like head and on her arms and legs and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of just pictured that with like a few extra uh, like with lopsided like kind of like mangled face that's like gone that's been like distorted from like some kind of mutilation. Um, and yeah, just like basically oozing instead of bleeding like blood, like oozing this blackness, this black tar like material. Yeah. So yeah, basically you're you're kind of your standard uh, J horror ghost monster or ghost girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not that that's a bad thing. No, no, I'm not saying it is a bad thing. Like there, it's no. there, there's a reason why J horror is scary to a lot of people. <laughs> it's because it's yeah, like it's, that. It's settling. Yeah, exactly. It's that um, what is it? The uh, almost like an uncanny valley, but in like the horror way, <laughs> like like even more so, like amplified for horror. But yeah, that's that's how I kind of saw her. It was like this, yeah, m- mutilated, gnarled woman, like mm-hmm. corpse woman <laughs> with tar. So, yep. Mikey, much <laughs> huh? <Good> morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. How did you see uh, the the creepy uh, woman? <laughs> uh, just an old lady. Oh, I was an old lady. I think so. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Fair. And gamer, since you out of all of us, you have the more like kind of a like Warframe aesthetic appeal and stuff of that. So, what did you see when you saw? Well, I'm wondering the actual origin of this creature. Now that I'm thinking about it more and more, is like. It's probably a freaking Orican. So honestly, no. With our future brain knowledge of Orican, I would oh. imagine it has one extra long arm. It would probably with clawed digits on it. Oh, oh God! I know what the ooze is now. Okay, black Kuva. Ooh, <laughs> like some kind of like weird, like yeah, like because we're for those of you who have listened to our previous episode about Nabris and about mm. the the whole explanation of blue Kuva and red Kuva. Yeah, what if like there's a black Kuva, which is like, a, like a, basically like a haunted sort of like a weird like cursed haunted kind of like Kuva that does other thing like other weird supernatural things. <laughs> hell yeah! Maybe it's like of, I really want to know what the hell is up with Kuva. <laughs> It's like this weird, what like is? magical potion. Like, who the fuck yeah, made it? It's it's a poultice of sorts. Yeah, yeah. And like, and like, Rainier used it to create like undying liches to fight us or to to uh to uh to hunt down the the Tenno. So pretty much. Uh, hang on, looking up Google quickly. Uh, Wikipedia Kuva. Um. Oh, um. So and it's used to. It's used. Hang on. That can be collected with the help of the oper- of operator. Oh, sorry, that's a little. Uh, of uh, um, the operator void abilities from Kuva siphons, uh, which appear yeah, on planets fine. near the ever moving Kuva fortress. Interesting. Yeah, I don't like. We don't know a whole lot. Like lore wise, like there's the there's like bits and pieces. Um, mm. Yeah, I'll we'll have to watch some of the cutscenes again. Apparently, apparently it all plays a metallic taste. About it. Sorry, does it? Uh, according to uh, according to Karis, um, again some some deep <laughs> Warframe lore, uh, they described the Kuva as having a metallic taste. Yeah, um, you know, yes, Black Kuva would be cute. Also, might have to do with creating cephalons and like the glassing for everything. They, yeah, it seems like there's like there's more than just the black the blue. There might be more than just the blue and the red. Yeah. So yeah, maybe Black Kuva is like another like weird version of it that does something. Like, oh, this creature from this story could be like a witch that invented all the Kuvas. Oh god, yeah, like or a Kuva witch. Ooh. <laughs> okay, now we need to t- now we need to write that story. <laughs> Kuva witch, yeah, but yeah. So Warframe is such Shadowrun. Sorry, Mikey, because it's like <laughs> super high tech and magic. Yeah, no, it's 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 magic and science together. It's it's mm-hmm. science fan. It's it is like. Like move aside, Anthem and Destiny. Like Warframe was the original science fantasy, um, like series of of video games. I mean, I'm sure actual Lee will show up in the comments on that. But yes, oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> of modern yeah. time, probably of modern time. Yeah, that's obviously. Yeah. And yeah. then they and there's a nice happy helping of horror in it as well. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. it only makes it better. Yes, exactly. Horror makes the world go round. 
I've noticed over the years you've kind of corrupted me. <laughs> like I, yes. before, I was like, I don't really care too much about horror, and now it's like, yeah, there's horror elements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scary shit. Throw yeah. that in. <laughs> Sprinkle that all over my my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like case in point, the most recent uh, like uh, Shadowrun character I made. Sorry, Mikey. Is like I made her like really weird. And horror based, and like she pulls her eye out to like hack. You shit. basically made a Warframe. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> like she's very Giver esque, which was yeah. definitely an inspiration for Warframe. Yes. But yes. Um, so do you have anything else then? Gamer? No, that's about it. Okay. So I guess we shall move on to final thoughts. Um, personally, this is to me like this is a very valiant effort. Uh, at telling an in-fiction Warframe creepypasta, like telling a Warframe story in the world of Warframe. Uh, it is a tad dated, so given what we've learned in recent years of development of the game uh, and the story in the game, but it could easily be updated. Like, There's nothing saying that this couldn't be updated for um, like the more, re- more, in- more recent information that's come out uh, since like the Second Dream and such. So Honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot that like the only thing I think changed. needs to be done is just like a little bit more about like the Warframe Tenno relationship. That's about it. Yeah, like it describing that they're like hairless. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Broke. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe like just in the kind story. Of... There's no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the story, yes, yes. Like maybe like build up, like maybe just update that a little bit. But honestly, this is a pretty tight, um, like in lore story of some really cool like. Basically, like I want to go on this mission and, and have to deal with this temp- this tower in the void. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And have to deal with the with the uh, the Kuva witch because <laughs> it's just another. She had with some sort of name, like we yeah. just gave her one. That's that's good, but because yeah. yeah. otherwise, I've been referring to her as just like the Shadow Lady because that's all yeah. she is. That's all they kind of say as a but, descriptor. Yeah, they kind of just call, refer to her as the creature <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, and granted, um, in that situation. Uh, Loki's not going to be like, hello, miss, what is your name? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially not this Loki. <laughs> no. Um, Although he is kind of edgelordy, so he may. Yeah. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so for me, it's it's a mostly partial recommendation, or like, like a mostly positive recommendation, because like it has a strong it, it's it's in a strong place as far as the warframe creep pastas go like we've we've seen some that aren't very good <laughs> um and and honestly this is sort of the culmination of like everything that we wanted in a warframe creep pasta like in fiction to like heighten the the horror aspect so it's not just a player who has no harm to them physically because they're playing a video game and by the end, he's like, "That's weird." Anyways, I kept playing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just needs a little. This one just needs a little bit more refinement, I think. Like again, a little bit more, a little up, a little update patch, maybe, mm-hmm. um, to to bring it back, bring it up to um, uh, to the current like timeline and stuff like that. Um, and, and not even like, no, I don't even mean like for events and stuff. Like that. I just mean like for what we know now about like Warframe characters and such. Yeah, because the, the nature a lot over the years. Exactly. Yeah, and there was a lot of speculation in the early days of what Warframe was like underneath the armor. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, regardless, I really dug it. So I think people would too, uh, because if they if they are fans of Warframe and they want a Warframe esque creep pasta in lore, this is a good a good start. So, uh, that's my recommendation. Mostly positive. <laughs> um, Mikey, he stands for evil. All right. All right. Well, as I've said before, I I like the ending, but I want to know more. <laughs> as always, oh. Mikey is the princess of our show. <laughs> she must have more. He must have more. Yes. Well, but, like the the biggest question I had is what happens to the group of four? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and then based on context clues, the same. Nothing damn good. Thing. <laughs> nothing good. <laughs> Yeah, that too. Yeah, and then to me, the the blurb at the end that isn't part of the story, but is the author like that's the, part of the, the description. Whole, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that that to me ruined part of it because of the usually solo. Um, 
that this glitch happens. Uh, just, I like, yeah. I like that it's based off of a glitch that happened, but they usually solo ruined it for me. Um, that's fair enough. Yeah, fair. So I'm going to give this a partial recommendation. Okay, fair enough. Okay. And gamer. So I like the setup and everything. I liked uh, most of. I liked it most of the way through, but the ending was a little puzzling for me in the the same way that Mikey's saying. Mainly just the state of the Tenno that were allowed to leave the prison. Like, are they zombies now? Do they go back to normal life? Not not everything is explained, so in a way, I must have more, but... (laughs) um... Man, you would hate the ending of Lost Boys. (laughs) Like, Lost Boys is a great horror movie, like great vampire hunting movie and stuff like that, but the Spoilers for a for a movie from the from 1990, <laughs> um, but at the end, um, like just as everything is like everything's about to like go badly for like like the head vampire is about to like kill the mom and stuff like that, the grandfather shows up, kills the head vampire with like uh, uh, like by crashing through and like sending a bunch of antlers through him. <laughs> um, you know, he had he was like a taxidermist, like so he had like a shit ton of stuff in his house, and he just crashed through his house to like to. And and like on the wall, there was a bunch of antlers, and they just like went crashing into the guy. Um, nice. But then at the end, like, and the grandfather up until the, that point, the grandfather was just this weird like wily character um, who never like really I like thought you're going to say coyote. <laughs> God damn it! Who really did? Who <laughs> really did? Yeah, yeah. So like he like he's just kind of in the background. Like he was just kind of this quirky eccentric character. Um, didn't really seem to be like too tied to like what was going on in the plot and stuff like that. He's just, like he showed and they shows up at the last minute, and then. Um, he gets out of the truck and like uh, the, the, the family's like, Oh grandpa, you're okay. And it's like, you know, the one thing I never got about Santa Carla is all the goddamn vampires. And it literally fades to black as the, uh, on the family as they're like, wait, what? <laughs> like you knew. <laughs> and it cuts to black there. <laughs> oh geez. Like that. And that's that, it, that, to me, that's like, Mwah! chef's kiss like so like mm-hmm. i love that kind of ending it's just like where it just leaves the uh, the, the 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 audience just like to wonder and speculate what happens next because that's yeah. like that's horror right there mm-hmm. and you're not wrong yeah but i also i i get you guys like wanting to be wanting more because again i too also want more i i, w- I wouldn't mind a sequel <laughs> where we find out what happens to the other four but mm-hmm. yeah and just because i want more doesn't mean i didn't enjoy what i got Yes, because I, I very much did. It stayed in in uh, in fiction. It's not just a dude playing a game and then spooky shit happens. Uh, things are described well. The creature is cool. Their movements are described awesomely. <laughs> um, it's based off of a weird glitch, which is awesome. Yeah, like it's checking a lot of check marks, and there's only a couple of downsides, but nothing's perfect. Not everything is who was phone. Exactly. You know, yeah, N- nothing can beat who was phone. No, that's true. But overall, I'll still give it a full recommendation. As a Warframe creepypasta, it's great. Just, there's always ways to make it better. And having that ending swap to him telling his rescuers. And then Instead of revealing. just the story being there for the sake of it being there. Yeah. I personally would like that. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that I think that would in, in, enhance the ending. Hmm. If we actually got a reason for why he's saying this in game, like in story, yeah. Okay, so yeah, generally we all enjoyed it, though there is room for improvement. I think is what we're I'm, what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was our that was this week's episode. If you like what you heard, or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted, whether it be on Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr. We're all on Twitter, so you can talk to us there. Mikey is at in the East Ends for Evil. <laughs> yeah, in varying degrees. Uh, Mikey's at the E stands for evil. The gamer in yellow is at the gamer in yellow, but without the W at the end because his name is very long. Yeah. And I'm at Review Cultist. You can also send us emails at aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. Or you can also leave us suggestions for other creepypastas, SCPs, spooky cryptids, and ghost stories, and Reddit no sleeps, and what have you. Send us your creepy shit, and we will read it and discuss it on the show. Um, you think there's a Reddit no sleep story that the title is longer than the actual story itself? 
dare we search for it? <laughs> <laughs> dare we search for it for next year for no no sleep member? <laughs> yeah, because I think yeah we're. I, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to find Warframe creep bosses for for ten November. I don't think we're gonna. Yeah. I don't think we're lasting another se- another year of, of ten not. November. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. Send us if you if you find one out there, audience uh, of a no sleep uh, story that is the title is longer than the story itself. <laughs> send it to us, and maybe we'll do an April Fool's episode. <laughs> but, yeah, there you go. Um. But I digress. Uh, if you'd like to help support our show, you can go to Patreon and look up the backer tree you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier currently with special episodes, early access, extra content. Uh, for our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you guys immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these stories, thank you immensely. Because without your listenership, it would be like speaking into the void. <laughs> Um, and then having the uh, a Kuva lit uh, a Kuva witch show up and you know stab us in the gut. <laughs> nope. Um, and uh, without your authorship, we wouldn't have this conversation. We wouldn't have this discussion. We wouldn't have read this really cool, creepy story. So thank you. Until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. Hi, Mikey. E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.